Hello, everyone. All right, so let's take it to the comments. All right, so Arturo Gonzalez Garcia says, you are literally the only one on the internet explaining how the JD-08 works, so thank you so much. And you're welcome so much for that. Um, yeah, the JD-08 initially confused me, um, but it wasn't until I started applying some of the more fundamental principles of synthesis that I began to understand it myself. Um, modular really helps out with that, by the way. So um, I just figured I would just share the knowledge. Okay, so could you explain how LFOs work? And do you know what the key follow does? Okay, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. All right, so um, an LFO is essentially what, what, what we call a low frequency oscillator. It's basically an, an inaudible waveform that influences the behavior of other parameters of the synthesizer. So I'll explain more of that during the demonstration it's because again because lfos are inaudible it's sometimes it's a little difficult to determine what they're going to do before they do it and then with the jd08 the lfos are pre-patch or pre-designated so um you have very limited control over what the LFO will influence but fortunately each of the main sections of the JD-08 have a have a dedicated LFO um, attenuverter and I'll explain what that means <laughs> here in a few as far as key follow is concerned um, key follow is basically kind of the same thing I just mentioned in regard to the LFO's attenuverter or the amount of influence it'll have. The only difference is, is that instead of you using a dial to determine how the LFO will behave, you use the keyboard. So the higher the pitch on the keyboard, the more drastic the LFO will influence the pitch, the cutoff, or the uh, amplitude, and vice versa. If you dial key follow to its negative value, uh, the lower frequencies or the lower pitches on the keyboard will have a more significant influence on the behavior. Of, uh, excuse me, on the behavior of your sound. So uh, enough talking. I've, I've, I've talked enough. So let's go ahead and get to the demonstration. All right, let's take a look. So what is an LFO? An LFO is a low frequency oscillator, basically a low frequency waveform that influences the behavior of some parameter of a synthesizer. Um, in instances such as these, I like to visualize my waveforms. So with that being said, let's take a look at this. So what's in front of you is a LFO, well, more specifically, a sine wave LFO. And we have this at about two at a 200 millisecond resolution. Basically, I've zoomed out because if I were to zoom in, the, the waveform would be incredibly slow. Not much to see there. But the point is, is that this is what an LFO looks like. Now, let's take it back to the JD-08 for a moment. Because the JD-08 has um, some rather interesting parameters as it, as it relates to uh, LFOs. So let's take a look at our LFO section here. Okay, so we have two LFOs. We have LFO 1 and we have LFO number 2. We also have a series of waveforms, sine waves, sawtooth waves, square waves, what appears to be sample and hold, and a noise. So with that being said, the LFO is pre-patched to the waveform generator, the TVF, and the TVA, or VC, or the VCF and the VCA, what I like to refer to them as. So let's see what happens when we patch the LFO, or should I say when we activate the LFO associated with the waveform generator. All right, so let's take the LFO amount, push it to the positive range. Okay, so what's happening right now is just like I mentioned before, it's a sine wave. <clears throat> it's a sine wave 
that's causing a fluctuation in the pitch, up and down, up and down. Okay, let's slow the rate down a bit. So we have peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. Very, very slow peaks and valleys. If I were to do the exact same thing with the sawtooth waveform, we would have a gradual climb and then eventually an instantaneous descent. <laughs> there we have it. Okay, now. Okay, all right, so I think you get the point. Now, another thing to note about the JD-08's LFO is that um, this dial, this slider right here, is bipolar, has positive, has a positive, neutral, and negative zone. So, with that being said, not only does this act as an attenuator, and by the way, an attenuator is basically a dial or a knob that ultimately determines the amount of influence the LFO will have on that particular parameter. Okay, so with that being said, <laughs> um, not only is it an attenuator, not only can you change the level of it, but it's also an attenuverter. Um, so not only can you determine the amount, but you can also determine whether whether the amount is negative or positive. So say, for example, if I dial this down to the negative zone, well, instead of having a climb, what we'll have is a descent. So that's actually kind of interesting. Um, and it gives, uh, uh, it gives access to other more, well, it makes your LFO just that much more dynamic. The fact that you have an attenuverter built into the um, LFO dial. And then, okay. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, the next question is, what does key follow do? Well, key follow is very, very similar to the LFO attenuverter dial, but the only difference is, is that instead of the attenuverter dial ultimately determining how the LFO will impact a particular parameter, it, the keys on the keyboard do. So um, it works like this. So right now, we just have normal sounds on our keyboard. Now, if I take the key follow, if I take key follow and I dial it full positive, and if I take my LFO, dial it full positive, I should get a uh, and a pitch oscillation. So what you're hearing are rapid um, ascents and descents in the pitch. Now this is when it's set full positive. Now what's going so what's happening here? is the higher the pitch of the keyboard, uh, the more drastic the spikes in frequency or in pitch. So, so again, the higher the octave or the higher the pitch on the keyboard, the more drastic the pitch climb. So then the question is, what happens if we play extremely low pitches? Well, we don't get much of anything. There is no drastic spike or decline. It's relatively tame. And again, this is because key follow is set full positive. However, if I dial key follow full negative, the lower frequencies or the lower pitches are going to cause the more drastic spike in the uh, pitch. So right now, we're dialed down to the lowest octave possible on the JD-08. But watch this. Mm -hmm. 
it's causing a drastic spike in pitch, even at these low octaves. Let's up the octave. Not so drastic. Let's up the octave again. Okay, it's starting to stabilize now. And now we're neutral. So let's go to higher octaves. So as you see, now what's happening is that our higher octaves are giving... Our higher octaves are not influenced by the LFO's behavior as much. I wouldn't necessarily say it's complete attenuation because there's still a spike and decline in the pitch, but it's not as drastic as it once was at the lower octaves. So, but higher octaves on the other hand, just like before, cause the more drastic spikes. Long and short, what Keyfollow is doing is it's giving you a more dynamic method of controlling the influence your low frequency oscillator has on any parameter. My suggestion is that you experiment with it because um, there may be uh, a portion of your arrangement where in which you're playing a chord that's uh, that has an extremely high octave, but at the same time you don't want the LFO to spike out of control. So what you can do is you can use key follow to tame the amount of modulation according to the keys that you just so happen to be playing. And vice versa. If you're playing a lower octave and you want a sudden spike in oh amplitude or you want your filter cutoff to behave differently or if you want the uh, waveform generators uh, pitch to slightly modulate well, you can use key follow to influence that. It's a pretty interesting dynamics tool. And well, there you have it. Okay guys, so that pretty much does it for LFOs and key follows. I'm hoping that that made sense because again, um, these are some of the more confusing characteristics of the JD-08. And again, just simply due to the fact that they're inaudible, just simply due to the fact that they're pre-patched, it's kind of, difficult to determine what what they are doing or what they're going to do prior to doing it but hopefully with this newfound knowledge um what's happening will make more sense as you do it <laughs> so if you guys have any more questions please leave them in the comments i will get to them as quickly as i can and um other than that you guys take care and i'll see you later